Good morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. You know, I cover a lot of topics on the show that are kind of, I mean, as you can see, it gets into some complexities, and taxes being one of the most complex of the things that we deal with. Investing, of course, is, is not far behind in terms of the things we deal with there as well. And when it comes to putting together a plan, an income plan in retirement, all these factors play into it. And so when it comes to these complexities, understanding them, and, and hopefully getting an idea of just how, uh, how complex it can be, how complicated it gets when you start planning. There's so many different variables and tremendous effect, I mean, potentially devastating effect on you in retirement if you're paying more in tax than you're required to pay. It's like just wasting money just because you didn't know. So understanding these rules, and if you're not sure, make sure you get with someone that can help you with that, because this is an area that you, you can't, there's no do-overs, okay? If you, if you plan poorly, if you take income out, for instance, out of those retirement accounts and you pay that tax, and later you learn about a way that you would have been able to reduce the tax or maybe take less out and spread it out over time and it could have saved you a bunch of money, it's too late. There are no do-overs on this. So we have to make sure we get it right the first time. Uh, and this is one of those areas when it comes to planning. I know with my clients, it's also why we do reviews all the time. We want to make sure that not only are we staying on track with regard to their plan, but it gives us an opportunity to review the tax situation each year and see if there are ways that we can implement changes that can help save money. Roth conversion strategies, we're looking at that each year and seeing is there, is there a way that we can do a Roth stat strategy, Roth conversion, it would make sense for them. and. We, we start with up front when we're doing the planning, is it something that makes sense? And if it does, in each year we're checking in to see how much, make sure we can do the right amount to get the maximum benefit uh, over the long term. All right. As well as, of course, we want to. We're not looking to to um, ever pay more in tax than we're legally required to pay. That's it. Okay. Now, one of those two, as far as Social Security planning, this is another area that taxes can really. These are kind of sneaky taxes, like a tax trap. All right. If you want to, by the way, if you want to understand these things, before we go to that slide, but if you want to understand these things and for or get a personalized plan for yourself, be one of the first ten callers to my office today. Six one five. 376-5325. Tessa is standing by. She'll get your information. She'll send you out a checklist of things to bring to your appointment with me, and we will do up a comprehensive plan. We cover all these topics and more in regard to, in, in, in regard to your planning to make sure that you're going to have something that you can utilize. Show you your financial future based on the things you're doing today and in ways that you can improve that. Show you ways to maybe you know reduce your taxes as an example. That's one of the more common ones we do. How to reduce risk in your portfolio. We'll show you, we'll stress test your portfolio for you. We'll show you uh, in the next bear market what you can expect with regard to a loss on how you're invested today. All right, your asset allocation model will tell us, and it, we use Morningstar reports. There's a risk measure in there that shows you um, relative to the market how your portfolio will perform, whether it will be if, whether it's riskier than the market and therefore would uh, take an even bigger loss than the market, or whether it's less so, and by and by so by how much less so. And therefore, we can show you, well, relative to the market, you would lose, you know, half, a, half as much or you would lose one and a half times as much. Whatever it is, we'll be able to show you that. And other risks with regard to your investments, things that have worked over the last 10 years in the longest bull market in history. But what about the next 10 years when we're going to have a, at least one bear market in there if maybe, and maybe more? And how do you adjust to that? Uh, we'll, we can show you the kind of risks there and the little uh, potential time bombs that may be in there for you. So that's part of it as well. We talk about Social Security, we talk about Medicare, all of these factors we're going to factor in for you, a comprehensive plan. And it's, typically it's going to take two or three visits, but if you're willing to put in the time, I'm going to put in the time with you and we're going to come up with a plan to make sure you're able to attain and maintain your standard of living and quality of life no matter how long you live, not have to worry about running out of money, and be able to really enjoy and thrive in retirement as we talk about, okay? So again, 615-376-5325. Tess is standing by. She'll get your information. She'll send you out that checklist of things to bring to your appointment. And when you come in to see me, I'll give you a free copy of my book, Seven Steps to Financial Freedom in Retirement.
All right, now we'll dive back into our, uh, again, so when it comes to Social Security, understanding that uh, there are certain tax implications as well. And this is the, uh, as we said, tax traps, if you will. So even though we've got, we've got this, and this is going to help us, of course, in retirement, minimizing the effects of, the ta- of taxes on Social Security is another way, right, to make sure that money lasts longer. If we're paying less in tax, that means we're keeping more in our pockets. Who doesn't want to do that? It's so important to make sure our money lasts. So let's l- use an example here. Now, I didn't share this teaser with you up front, but this is about, um, we, we have a, a, a scenario, if you will, where we have a taxpayer who um, his IRA income is $38,000. His Social Security benefits, we'll get this slide up so you can see the numbers as well. His Social Security benefits are $25,000. He's got an adjusted gross income. This is the one that's example run, remember, Bill's 40.7% tax rate. So in, IRA income, 38000 Social Security benefits are 25000 His adjusted gross income is 56000 Yep, yeah, that's it. Uh, 56525 His taxable income, 42675 This is after a standard deduction. Income taxes on this, 5247 Now, they talk about he took money out then to go on a concert trip out of his IRA. His IRA income then, he took that uh, 39000 Social Security again, 25, 58. So he just b- took out $1,000, okay? Now what effect would that have? And he's in a bracket of 12, a 12% bracket, so you would think, or excuse me, 20, single person, 25% bracket, or 22% today, I'll get it right. He's in a 22% tax bracket today. That's going to sunset, of course, in five years, it'll be 25. But today, 22%. So you would think that he's only going to pay 22% uh, or $220 on that $1,000 distribution. But what happened is he ended up paying $407 tax on that $1,000, which is like 40%. Okay, now think about that. At 40%, <laughs> the, the highest tax rate's 37. How could he pay 41%? And this is where that taxation of Social Security comes in and understanding how that worked. So if you look at the next slide, okay, he got hit by that Social Security tax torpedo, as they put it here. For every additional dollar of income Bill received, an additional $1.85 was added to his adjusted gross income and therefore his taxable income. And that was because that as your uh, Social Security be- is, uh, benefits are taxed based on your income, and that can be up to 85% of your Social Security benefits are subject to income tax. Now, knowing this, when we're doing tax planning, right, we plan for it. So instead of him, of, in this scenario, for instance, we would be recognizing that, and of course we would have been planning ahead with regard to how much income you can take, what the effect's going to be with regard to taxation or Social Security benefits, and is that where we want to take the money from when we're, we're planning as far as income and taxes on those benefits. So if your income is high enough, and it doesn't take much in today's world, okay, then up to 85% of those Social Security benefits can be taxable and be counted in, in increasing, therefore, your adjusted gross income or your taxable income. One of the things with that, we look at, uh, when we're talking about Social Security and understanding how that works as far as taxation goes, understand the history of it. The taxes were up to uh, back in, let's see, the 80s, all right, when Ronald Reagan was president, uh, there was no taxation of Social Security benefits. And then at the last, I believe, year of his term, that when they were trying to, in the last couple of years of his term, when they were trying to fix Social Security because it was running out of money, kind of like today, uh, they had to do something. And one of the fixes that they came up with, in addition to raising the retirement age over, over time, remember when it was, uh, if you were born in the 19, I think before 1939, uh, you would have had a, a retirement, your full retirement age for Social Security purposes would have been age 65. Today, okay, depending on your date of birth, uh, up to age, you know, it goes from 66 to 67. I think if you're born 1955 or, or no, 1960 or later, then it's 67. So 
And one of the things that comes into play then is how that's changed. At that time, 50%, up to 50% of your benefits could be taxed, and that was passed into law with the first uh, Bush presidency. And then under Clinton's presidency, they wanted to do some more fixing, so then they had the potential for up to 85% they added in, and they set those income limits of what triggered that tax, that taxable income piece. They set them then, and they never adjusted for inflation. So today, it's quite common for people to have to pay tax on Social Security benefits, and we're going to show you, share some strategies with you to help min minimize that. But first, we're going to take a break. Join me here. We'll be right back on the Retirement Report.